Zachary was removed from his biological, his birth mother, around three months of age. Um, he was then placed with Kristen Bender, his, um, who adopted him. Um, when he was in her, her care, uh, reportedly he did well and was healthy for a portion of that time. Um, soon after, his mother, his adopted mother, Kristen, withdrew him from school um, and decided to homeschool him. A short time after that, the school psychologist noticed that he came in with his mom to pick up other children and his whole side of his face was bruised. Um, at that point, she made a, a hotline report to CPS, knowing that something was wrong. Um, when he came back into the exam room and Lisa had his shirt removed, it became apparent that uh, not only was he suffering from severe malnutrition, but he was in significant respiratory distress. And the reason for that, I think, was that his abdomen was so distended, it was compromising his lung function. When they called me, when they called me on Zachary, they said, we have this little boy who has um, been starved and he's medically fragile. Um, they said that he um, needed a, a specialized diet for refeeding, that he um, had a brain injury from the starvation, <clears throat> and they said that he had bruises. Uh, he had shiny skin, he had edema or swelling of the extremities, which is characteristic of protein calorie malnutrition. He was very pale. His hair was pale. And these are all consequences of malnutrition. Over time, we, we found out that she uh, had placed Zachary in a hallway behind a steel metal gate um, that separated Zachary from the rest of the family. He had to sit on one side of the metal gate and literally watch the entire rest of the family eat their meals. We called the emergency room at St. Joseph's Hospital, which is the closest hospital, and um, Mr. Del Valle drove him over there immediately and he was taken uh, straight to the back. So we got him to the hospital, I think, probably within five minutes of the time he left here. Um, I met Zachary at St. Joseph's Hospital, um, the Children's Medical Center. Um, I was asked to come up to the, the hospital to, um, to pick him up. He he um, very attached himself to Julie very closely. I mean, he wouldn't he should go more in a, like a foot from her when he first came. So he just kind of shadow, shadow her you know, all around the house. He pretty much, he just, he seemed to need uh, a mom and that love and affection so much that he just climbed right into my lap. The therapy with Zachary was a, a slow and very long process. He was often afraid in any situation. He didn't know who to trust. He didn't know um, who was here to take care of him or who loved him or who liked him or who would hurt him. So I would say probably for the first couple of months, um, he didn't really talk a lot in therapy sessions, sometimes not at all. The nurses told me that he had been very tough to refeed and that he was seemed obsessed with food. He constantly was asking for food and um, I think that was just because he, he didn't have enough. I would say it probably took around six months before he actually started to talk to me about what happened in his home. Um, and once he found his voice, he, he didn't stop talking. Child help is focused solely on to trauma, to traumatize children and rehabilitating them. And they have um, a group of experts here that have um, specialized in the therapies for the traumatized children and the post-traumatic stress and the bonding and attachment. They seem to have all of these experts in one place. The job we do collaborating with the other agents, agencies, child health, police, um, just child protective services, is so much better working together than we could do working individually. Uh, and it makes it easier for people to stay in this field knowing that the job they're doing is a better job and they're taking better care of their children and taking better care of their cases. I don't have enough good things to say about child help. It's just, it's hard to put it in words how much help that they've given these kids um, and Zachary and our family and the support. And without them, I don't know if we would have been able to do as good of a job as we've done with Zachary because I wouldn't have had that person to come to and say, this is going on this week. And what do I do? Zachary's amazing. He, he truly, I can say without question, is one of the most gentle, kind-hearted, loving children I've ever met. I got to watch him fill out and grow and start to develop cognitively, start to talk more. It's very rewarding to watch him change.
it's so great to see him now because he talks about sports at school and he talks about friends and video games and just normal kid stuff. So it's, it's an amazing story. From He came full circle. He's really grown from a very introverted, closed-in child that's gone through severe neglect to somebody who's very outgoing and wanting to be needed. Wander around the neighborhood place that all the children loves everyone. And it's that smile and that light and that exuberance that he shows for life. He's very passionate about, you know, every day. And he's so much fun because he's just, he's excited about everything. It's very clear he's being to really become a very happy child and is going to become a very happy, good adult. Keaton could remember when he was two years old not having enough food to eat or being hungry. His um, parents were drug users and um, he was adopted um, by his maternal grandmother at the age of three because the parents were not doing a very good job of parenting him and his sister. There were some indicators um, that Keaton was being abused. Um, Keaton was sexually abused um, by an older male cousin and you know knowing that that he experienced that on a, a weekly basis for so long it, it was it was hard to sit with. He would talk about it happening sometimes daily sometimes not if not daily a couple times a week and that's over a span of 10 years. The perpetrator had been in our home because we trusted him. He was a family member. We never had a reason to distrust him. And if you can imagine being five years old, I, you, can't, you can't even sometimes wrap your mind around it. I do have guilt because myself, I was a victim and I sh feel like I should have noticed the signs and I didn't. I don't know how I missed them, but I did. A child, instead of, you know, playing and worrying about riding his bike is worried about somebody's coming over and what are they going to do to me. No one knew him the way I did. Like, and they wouldn't feel the type of repulsion I did just seeing him in a room. Ever I started getting older and it was becoming more and more like a regular thing and I started to deteriorate and I started to lose myself and I guess that was my way of protecting myself. Keaton told a friend at school that this had taken place. We had no idea and that child was brave enough to go to the authorities and tell them what Keaton had told them. My friend went to the principals and told them what was going on. I, I was to the point where I didn't want to be alive anymore. He kept it all bottled up and eventually it affected him. It affected his schoolwork and he was, he broke down. Miss Laura, she was the first detective besides like the officer at my school. And I remember She was like, if I had a choice, I'd take you home. The floodgates opened and he began to disclose the pain of the sexual abuse, which he had been experiencing since he was five or six years old. Um, it started out as fondling and it went to much more. But his vivid description of everything that happened to him, it's something that you'll never forget and Keaton, to his credit, did a fantastic job describing uh, in detail what had happened. Those details provided the basis uh, for a search warrant, and once we obtained the search warrant, we were able to go into the house and look through the house, and we were able to uh, find a key piece of evidence. Uh, particularly, there was a spot in the carpet 
downstairs uh, where DNA evidence was found at that time. And then we sent that to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation's crime lab, which in our particular case was fantastically strong evidence that this crime had taken place. And we felt very comfortable to go forward and to prosecute this case. For a while, we weren't sure if he would have to uh, testify, but in the end, uh, all Keaton had to do in court was give a victim impact statement. Keaton had never been able to face the accuser. That day he was. And when he spoke to him, it was with authority. And the whole courtroom just became motionless and quiet. It was like I was crumbling, but at the same time, I was building myself back up. You could see like a weight was lifted off of the child. I can feel, my, feel myself smiling and starting to tear up now because he has come so far. I kept working hard and I ended up graduating in December. Child help has been his, his anchor, his sanctuary. I think he's turned his whole life around because of child help. He's smiling, he's happy. It's just awesome to see him the way he is today. He's never been a quitter, and he has to be his own hero. And I think he is, he just doesn't know it. But um, he's a hero for a lot of people make me tear up a little bit, but it is. I feel honored. It's a huge passion of mine. I love my job. And I go away, or I go home each day knowing that I was able to help another kid. And to see Keaton now, it's just awesome. She was brought into PCH where she was seen by our nurse practitioner, Cindy Nelson. Um, and Cindy said that it was probably one of the most horrific cases that she has ever seen. Uh, and that Lady A was lucky to be alive. She did come in as a trauma and I was her intake nurse um, that night. And it was um, very apparent to all of us, like the amount of trauma that she had been through. She had a duodenal tear. Her eyes were completely swollen shut. Um, we could count the amount of fingers from, you know, hands being held over her mouth, you know, count the fingers and the thumbprints. Um, we could even count knuckles that were on her belly, um, the bruising that had been done on her. And the extent of the physical injuries and the damage done to this poor baby. Sorry. We, we didn't know if she spoke Spanish. We didn't know if she um, could talk at all. We don't know if she was even ever, you know, taught that. The, really, the only thing she wanted was a bottle. She was two years old. She wouldn't eat anything by mouth. Um, you know, we, we had to put tubes in her to, you know, to essentially feed her. Wouldn't talk to any of us. Wouldn't um, do anything but just scream hysterically, essentially. You know, we all know that the broken bones can heal. We know that they'll recover from that. We can kind of fix that stuff, but really like, what was really hard for me when she first came in was like her little soul was so, so broken. And um, so like I said, the story was is that she had fallen down some stairs and that she had broken a leg. Every kid just needs one person and you could be that one person to save that child's life and to protect their future. And you just have to be that one person that changes that, per that kid's life. And they were having, they were having some difficulties finding placement, um, just based off of the physical needs that she needed, the emotional needs that she needed. You know, obviously just called my husband and said, you know, like she needs somewhere to go. And he was like, absolutely. I just, we just took everything really slow. Like, I just said hi, I had the Mickey Mouse shirt on, and I kind of left it. We all just really slow introducing her into the house, as far as my son and myself, so. Men scared her at first a lot, remember? She was nervous around my brother and my dad at first. 
with all the foster classes that we had to take in the beginning. Um, we just kind of navigated it. And with their help, it made it a lot easier. It, um, especially for her to open up and kind of, you could see the changes every time she did therapy and came home and would open up a little bit more and a little bit more and would be more comfortable. The nightmares, extensive, extensive nightmares. Um, she still, even still has difficulty with sleeping. So um, a lot of her therapy she did here at Child Help were around the nightmares. You know, when I started supervising and working with Crystal on this case, um, we discussed at length what would be best for Lady A. And it was clear she had just this amazing relationship with her current placement where she was with Angela and Matt. Um, she was, she was flourishing. We ended up adopting her on National Sibling Day. And we're like, that was a picture perfect day. So fun. It was so much fun. We had unicorns. unicorns, we had face paint, we had little name tags that were like our unicorn name. She's really good at art, super talented artist. She likes to swim, so we swim a lot, go for drives, build dream catchers. It's a favorite. A bright future. She's going somewhere for sure. I think she's going to help people like my mom. I can remember the first night that I heard her giggle in her sleep, and I talk about crying. Like, I I couldn't stop crying because I thought, oh my god, finally, she gets to have, like, a happy dream. And at Child Help, that's exactly what we do, is we nurture them, love them, keep them, and, and find their strengths, find their passions, and help them find what what is best for them. We get to advocate for them, we get to protect them. That's what we do, and that's why I chose Child Help. Such an emotional moment. Well, as the president's accomplishments played out in the global and political arenas, here in the Valley, Bush was a big supporter of Child Help. That's a Phoenix organization that helps abused and neglected children. Team Toll's Joe Dana caught up with the founders of Child Help to see how much the president meant to them. We missed, miss him already. Sarah O'Meara gets emotional talking about President George H.W. Bush. I'm introducing Danny to George Bush. He cared about every individual he met. You knew that because his eyes were riveted to you when you were talking. And uh, he was a class act. Sarah and Yvonne Federson co-founded Child Help, a nonprofit that advocates and helps abused and neglected children. George Bush and his wife attended many fundraisers for the organization dating back to the 1980s. While Sarah and Yvonne were admirers of the president, he admired their work. Whatever he was responding to, it would be about what wonderful work we were doing and, and what we what we meant to America to take care of its abused children. He loved the children. He would get on their knees and talk to them, get on their level and talk with them. And he was so sweet and so kind to each child. While the nation honors the president for his political and governing achievements, Sarah and Yvonne believe his influence reached even the youngest in need. Many abused and neglected children's lives. And that's what we appreciate so very, very much about them. The stay-at-home orders have kept the virus from spreading, but child abuse experts say they've also kept some children trapped in unsafe homes. Our Kate Snow reports tonight on the growing concern. At a playground memorial just outside Pittsburgh today, demands for justice for a three-year-old boy. Mikkel Fetterman died in April after being hospitalized for weeks with severe bruises, a skull fracture, and a brain bleed. He was a sweetheart. He was very loving. Like He would come in the house, sit on my lap. His mother told police she was sleeping and her boyfriend was taking care of Mikkel. He has pled not guilty to criminal homicide. She's charged with involuntary manslaughter and her lawyer says she intends to plead not guilty. With families confined under pressure, it's not an isolated case. Child Help Crisis Counselor, how can I help you? At the Child Help National Child Abuse Hotline, desperate kids are sending heartbreaking text messages. School being out is scary for me because I have to spend more time with her. My parents hit me constantly and sometimes lock me in the garage at night with the rats. I can't take it anymore. 
Do you happen to know if she has any bruises or marks right now? Laurel Jacobs is the hotline's clinical program manager. How are things different right now because of coronavirus? Well, we believe that one of the biggest additional risks right now is kids not having access to the safety and security of schools, daycares, organized activities. Teachers, nurses, bus drivers who by law have to report any suspicion of child abuse just aren't seeing kids as much. Without those safe adults speaking up on behalf of kids, we think that abuse is going unseen. So official reports of abuse to many state child protective agencies are down, even as contacts to the national hotline are substantially up, 31% in March and 17% in April. Pediatrician Narelle Atkinson is a child abuse specialist at St. Christopher's Hospital for Children in Philadelphia. We're seeing an overall decrease in the number of kids coming into the hospital with injuries, but the children that are coming to the hospital with injuries tend to have more severe injuries or injuries that require hospitalization. How concerned are you right now about children? Very concerned. We have the kids that are reaching out. That actually makes me feel better, that they reach out and we can try to guide and educate and prompt. But the ones that we're not hearing from are the scariest. In this difficult period, she says, we all have a responsibility to watch for signs that a child is in danger. Kate Snow, NBC News. If you or someone you know needs help, you can text or call 1-800-4-A-CHILD or go to childhelp.org. I am Jen Lilly. And I'm Jason Wayne. And And we've we've been been married married for almost 10 10 years. years. I'm an actress. I'm a singer. I'm a children's book author. I'm a wife. I'm a foster parent. Our schedules are crazy. If you were ever going to look at a couple and say like, oh, they're the perfect candidates for fostering, we would be your last choice. Growing up, there was always someone living with us that was not related to us, and I loved that. You know, I loved that my parents taught me to be charitable, and my whole life it was something I wanted to do. I remember when I first started wanting to advocate for children's rights and wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. My publicists were like, you can't talk about child abuse. Nobody wants to talk about it, which is exactly why we talk about it. It needs sunlight. This is an issue that definitely needs attention. There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of children that need foster care. Without foster parents, these kids are literally sleeping in social workers' offices under the desks or whatever. There's nowhere to put them. Child Help has this amazing program called Special Friends. Their whole slogan is, all who enter here will find love. Kids that have gone through Child Help, they go on to become senators and lawyers and teachers and fully active, amazing human beings. We had a special friend for two years who I just completely fell in love with. We went to see our special friend on her birthday at the Child Help Village. We were playing on the playground with her and she was like, my mom called. I'm so scared, you know, I'm gonna have to go back to my mom. That was kind of the turning point for me. This is like the calmest man in the whole wide world. He's like white knuckling the steering wheel, like we are gonna enroll in those foster parenting classes as soon as we get home. I was like, okay, okay, watch, you turn on your blinker. (laughs) Yeah, so we did. The same day we got our license, Child Help called, and they were like, hey, will you take this four-month-old boy? I remember telling my sister-in-law, I was like, zero to 12 months is my least favorite age. They have no personality, they're so helpless, like they need everything, I don't have time for this. He's so great. He's the happiest baby in the whole world. Fostering is amazing because if you're a good foster home, you're preventing that child from child abuse, child prostitution, homelessness, human trafficking. All of these things are related. You think you're just making an impact in one child's life, but really you're stopping a cycle of so many things. The first thing I would say to people is, I am not special. I mean, Sarah and Yvonne, the founders of Child Help, were two actresses on a USO tour, and here we are, almost 60 years later, they've rescued 11 million children. Just because they said, here I am, send me, I'm available. One of the things I get asked most commonly is, don't you get attached? I mean, I could never do it, because I would get attached. Of course I get attached. But here's what I think. I got involved in fostering not for my own self, but for the child. If my adult-sized heart can take a little bit of that pain that that child will experience throughout their life, then I've done something good, and I've done something worthwhile. Tonight, you are going to learn about child help through visiting their programs in California. I hope watching this show will get people to go to childhelp.org to learn more about every child help program in the country. 
It's so cool. Child Help has police and doctors that work at Child Help Children's Centers. The Child Help Children's Advocacy Centers in Arizona launched the whole concept of abused children getting help in one place without going someplace scary to them. Like a police station. Or like a hospital. <laughs> child Help set the standards, and now it's the national model for the child abuse treatment. The Tennessee and Virginia child help programs treat child abuse, investigate child abuse, and help find loving forever homes for the kids. And I love that Child Help Village in Virginia is just like the one in California, a real working ranch where kids get horses and a farm animals to help them heal. And I love the Virginia Village is open to kids from Washington, D.C. too, and every state in the Mid-Atlantic. And West Virginia. Hey, what's the Mid Atlantic? Look it up. Go, Go to www.childhelp.org. We're starting things off with John Stamos, or maybe we should say with Billy Stamos, since he is the star of the show, this little guy. Look at him, this little guy tagged along Aww. for the interview. Uh, and let me just say, John has been very emotional lately. I love seeing this side of him. He also wanted to clear up a few misconceptions about his life. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He keeps us busy, so we haven't had time to do the thing you do to have another one. But yeah. we're gonna we're gonna send him away. We're gonna leave him here this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> we'll leave him with you, John. You were the eternal playboy in my mind. Did you ever think you would be a father in your fifties? I didn't think it. I prayed for it. I, I you know, I mean. To be brutally honest, like uh, that that whole Playboy thing, I felt like, oh, I needed to keep that up for people that were living vicariously through that guy who they thought I was. But it was never really me. It was this was always me. Is it about right time, right place, or just meeting the person that makes sense? Certainly, in my case, I, I think I needed to really uh, be the best me that I could be, and then I think then I would hope that the right person would come in. And I waited a long time, and uh, I like to say that there, there's. A few more angels up there looking out for me, and my mom passed away a couple years ago, and then I straightened my act up, and she came into my life. You love her. <laughs> I do, yeah. I love her, too. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this guy. Oh, We'd like to present God. you guys with $10,000. What you ladies have done is, uh, you know, it's just... We couldn't have done it Remark though without people like you, John. We have helped over 10 and a half million children. I'm just so grateful for you two. Now that we have a son, it's a whole. I know. You know, when deeper. you look at your child, I'm sure you think, how can anyone hurt a child like that? You guys gave a big announcement today about something that's happening here. You're actually going to be the spokesperson and ambassador for the hotline. Right. What is the hotline going to do for children and parents out there? Well, it's one 800 for a child and um, you call up if, if, you know, if you're a child and you're feeling like this, something's not right in the home. Uh, the, the parents, I think this is great too, that we, we put out, we're putting out a new PSA, but if the parents feel like, oh, I want to do something I shouldn't do, call and, and, and there's great counseling for that. You've been coming here for almost 35 years, but this year you became a dad. Yeah. How has that changed your outlook on it? I cry a lot more. <laughs> cry all the time. I had some affinity towards children since, you know, early on. I have a, she calls me the baby whisperer. I can get to kids. I might as well do something good with it, right? Who gave you the best parenting advice? Pretty big celebrity. I'm not going to say who it was, but he, he said, just show up. Just be there. And when you're there, be there. Hey, hey look alive. Uncle Jesse's here. Fuller House. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's going to be good this season. Well, Kimmy is pregnant this season. That's right. So Billy could be the baby. Would you get him that gig? <laughs> I think uh, I think we'll wait before we put him on TV. Yeah. Don't you think? You know what? Just do it now. <laughs> the Olsen's <laughs> turned out fine. They were good. They're good. All those kids turned out well. I'm proud of those kids on there. Candace and Jody and Andrea. Good mothers. Good, good people. They're amazing. Saget I'm worried about, but the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Something you and I have in common is that we're both involved in the organization Child Help. I know that's one of your yes. passions. Yeah. I love you for that, Cameron. 
I, I oh, just think that's you. so wonderful. It's, an, as you know, an amazing organization. I don't have to tell you, Cameron. You have done a lot of wonderful things for child help. And, um, but I've been doing it now almost 40 years. I started when I was on Charlie's Angels. Oh, my goodness. And um, I had a two-year-old daughter and actually did a film called When She Was Bad. I played a, a woman who abuses her child because there, nobody was talking about the issue. So, you know, it was it became such a part of my life. And when the show was on the air, I was on uh, the Dinah Shore show to promote the movie. And at the end of it, I said, if there's anyone out there working uh, against child abuse and, and has, I want to help you, call me. And as I walked off the set after I was on the show and I was leaving, there was a man standing right there at the door and he said, I'm sorry, Miss Lad, the phone's for you. And I got on the phone and it was Sarah O'Meara and Yvonne Federson from Child oh. Help and said, Cheryl, oh, we goodness. need you. We love you. We want you to come <laughs> and see what we're doing. Midnight Heroes, Sarah O'Meara and Yvonne Federson have been fighting for the lives of children for 60 years. They started what's now known as Child Help. It's the largest child advocacy organization in the world, bringing awareness to help children who are victims of abuse. I've seen their work firsthand. O'Meara and Federson's motto has always been, all who enter will find love. These incredible, dedicated, hardworking women at this for 60 years, they are tonight's Midnight Heroes. Roosevelt Rawls, singer, child advocate, Child Help Celebrity Ambassador. What are you and your family doing here for Child Help's LA We Care Karaoke? You guys don't even live in Los Angeles. Well, hi, Polly Haraka. Wait, Polly Haraka, the Polly Haraka, former NASCAR champion and celebrity Child Help Ambassador, mentoring kids with that double duty Duke Stanford degree. <laughs> you don't live in Los Angeles either. Well, Polly, we're here because tonight is virtual. Everyone is singing from their home. So you get a little bit of me and my family and my dad's sense of humor. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Hey, hey, Polly. <laughs> and since it's karaoke and not America's mask voice, so you think you've got talent, it's okay to be off tempo and off key when you sing along tonight. I mean, the point is for us to have fun and show you care. Well, if we know the song, can we sing along with it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so yeah. of course you can. <laughs> we all um, get to sing along with some of the biggest child help celebrity ambassadors. Kicking us off, he's not live and he's not in New York, but he does care about kids. So joining us with a shout out from Washington, D.C. to challenge an entire city of child help angels, it's Saturday Night Live's Pete Davidson. Hey guys, we're over here in D.C. You guys got to step up your game, do some karaoke for the kids, all the way to L.A. <laughs> Reagan, did you know we have an uncle named Jesse? Well, he's not really our uncle. But Nana said we're going to be singing with Uncle Jesse for child help. She's told me that he's done lots of cool things, like worked at a hospital. What kind of hospital? Um, a general hospital. And he has Disney rides at his house. That doesn't sound like an uncle. It sounds like he's a kid. Well, he is a big shot. At least that's the name of his new TV show. And he plays music with a bunch of boys that live at the beach. But Nana says the most important part is that he has a really big heart. And all we have to do to help is introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Introducing everyone's favorite uncle. He's not my uncle. A Hollywood star who's also an everyday hero. <laughs> Give it up for John Stamos and his everyday heroes. All right, here's one of our all-time favorites from the Beach Boys. It's called Little Saint Nick. My wife Caitlin here is going to help us out, so we hope everyone's singing along. Well, away up north where the air gets cold, there's a tale about Christmas that you've all been told. 
a real famous cat. All dressed up in red, and he spends the whole year working out on his sled. It's the little Saint Nick. It's the little Saint Nick. Just a little bobsled, he calls it old Saint Nick. But she'll walk a toboggan with the four-speed stick. She's candy apple red with the ski for a wheel. And when Santa hits the gas, man, just watch her feel. It's the little Saint Nick. It's the little Saint Nick. And hauling through the snow at a frightening speed With a half a dozen deer with the Rudy to lead He's gotta wear his goggles cause the snow really flies And he's cruising every path with a little surprise It's the little Saint Nick It's the little Saint Nick Christmas comes this time each year Christmas comes this time each year. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so happy that Caitlin's joining me this year. And, you know, music can heal a heart and inspire hope. So thanks for joining us and singing along with Child Help to some of our favorite Christmas songs. And this is a chance to raise our voices together in support of the life-saving work Child Help does throughout California and across the nation. That's right. Now, I've been working with this amazing organization since I met the founders over... So I'd say three decades. Three decades, 30 years. Three decades ago. And I love the fact that even a $20 donation can help save a life. So join me in taking the Child Help Challenge, all right? Because we got to spread the word about the Child Help National Child Abuse Hotline, which is 1-800-4-A-CHILD. And learn more about how you can help abuse children at childhelp.org. At the Child Help Villages, music therapy is one of the ways they help children silenced by abuse to find their voices. And my challenge to you is to post a video of you singing a Christmas song with the hashtag Child Help Challenge, all right? And challenge your friends to do the same thing. I'm going to challenge Bob Saget and see if he does it. I'm going to start off this Child Help Challenge to a former Charlie's Angel who is now just a real-life angel. Here she is, Cheryl Ladd. Hi, Cheryl Ladd. Let's sing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow. In a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, the fields we go. Bells on Bob Sled's ring. Making spirits bright. What fun it is to laugh and sing the slanging song tonight. Oh, jingle, jingle bells, bells, jingle bells, bells jingle, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Woo! Mwah! Love you! Oh, that was that so good. Was that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, who was the guy getting his hair cut? That was my child help challenge. Race car driver Justin Bell and Hollywood stylist Nico. Oh, awesome. Wow, Cher Ladd has the voice of an angel. Yeah, she is so amazing and does so much work for child help. I also love John Stamos singing from his home with his wife, Caitlin, and his son, Billy. <laughs> John is such a dedicated child help celebrity ambassador. I really respect how much he does for these kids. We've got lots of stars coming up and lots of inspiring stories about child help's work and ways that you can help child help save lives. And just to keep you glued to your seats this entire hour, 
we are saving two of the best for last. But first, Child helps amazing co-founders, Sarah O'Meara and Yvonne Federson, with a hilarious and dedicated Child Help volunteer, Reba McIntyre's co-star and Hollywood star, Melissa Peterman. Yeah. No, Reba. Reba, I got to go. No, I... Yes, keep the red hair. Everybody loves it. It's your signature. No, Reba. Reba, I really, I have to go. I am about to get on a Zoom with the Child Help founders, Sarah and Yvonne. <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah, I know you love them. I'll tell them. I love them too. I mean, who doesn't love them? They are just amazing. I mean, can you believe that they started Child Help 60 years ago and they are still working every day to help children? But I'm telling you, these ladies, they look like they just stepped out of magazine every day. I'm telling you, they're going to bring their A game to a Zoom meeting. So I got to pull it together, Red. Okay, no, I, I got to go. Yeah, yes, always encore with fancy. They expect it. They love it. But I got to go. Okay, I got to go. I'll tell them. I, I'll tell them. Mm, I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, my God. Okay, all right, here. Just that'll work. Huh? Pretty. Okay. All right, Melissa, just pull it together. Hey, Sarah Devon. Okay, let's try that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Whew. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're here. <laughs> hey, Melissa. Hi. Hi. So happy that you have joined us for We Care Karaoke. You are the best ambassador. We sure do appreciate you. But I tell you, this is a serious, serious issue that we're having in child abuse. You know, child abuse has escalated tremendously through this pandemic. There are children out there that really need our help. And you're part of the light that helps that darkness. Uh, we, we need people, I think, more now than we ever have. Uh, we're getting a record number of calls on our National Child Abuse Hotline. It's gone up over 43%. And, you know, we have done all that we can throughout all of our programs across the nation. We've, we've gone to great lengths to protect the children and the staff. It's been quite a challenge during this awful, awful virus. It's people like you, too, I want you to know, Melissa, that yeah. help us keep going. Well, you know, the L.A. chapter is really a fabulous chapter. And ladies, I hear that Laura Murano is one of the singers tonight. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I love her so much. I mean, I remember when she was just like a young little cute Disney star. And now, I mean, that was amazing. But now she's this fantastic vocalist. And she's got over 9.7 million followers on Instagram. I mean, I've got you know a couple hundred thousands, but I follow her, and I'm proud to be one of her followers. She's amazing. Who else do she we have? Amazing. Tonight? Oh, we have Cheryl Ladd, we have Inkelbert Humperdinck, and we have Jen Lilly. Oh, we have so many stars, and we're so delighted that they are giving their time to do this for child help and the children in our care. But it's just not our wonderful stars. It's also everyday heroes that will be a part of this program. We love them I all. I love that. I love it. We've got Hollywood stars. We've got all of our everyday heroes. And we just got to see my husband, John Stamos, sing. I mean, oh, I love him so much. I, I mean, we do too. <laughs> I mean, I was wondering, I mean, fingers crossed, maybe later on in the, the show, him and I could sing a duet together, you know, maybe like a little spinoff on the Beach Boys, something water, something water themed. Ooh, Islands in the Stream. Islands in the stream, that is what we are. I would be your wife if we didn't live away so far. I love you, John. Wanna, wanna. Sorry, ladies, I just went into my own world right there. I love you. <laughs> we hope lots of people are watching. We certainly will be. And please donate. We would appreciate anything that you choose to give to child help and for our precious children. And you know what? Your money could save a child's life. That's right, ladies. We want everyone out there watching, we want you to, to give big or give small. Every little bit counts because those little bits together are so very powerful. Now, ladies, I'm going to have to let you go. I'm sure you probably got 17 other things to do since you work all the time. I've got to kick the show off, okay? Okay. God okay. bless you. Thank you. I mean, unless you want to sing a little trio with me, huh? <laughs> I, mean, I could bring in this lady. 
Come on, no, ladies. We have 17,000 other things to do. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to kick off the show. Thank okay. you. And we love you. Reba, do you want to start off the show with a little duet, perhaps? Here's your one chance, fans, so don't let me down. Does he love you? I'm a survivor. Hey, y'all, it's Reba McIntyre, and I want you all to sing your little hearts out tonight for We Care Karaoke. I swear, it's me, Reba McIntyre. It's not Melissa holding me on a stick. It's me, Reba McIntyre. Let me quote Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Child abuse is that silent epidemic where people don't see it and they don't realize it's happening. We know that child abuse is a cycle and the children that we're taking care of at Child Help were really their last chance. All who enter here will find love. That is over all of our programs, all of our buildings. Our goal is to help children heal and to leave here having better, brighter futures than when they walked in our door. Murph Griffin Village is located here in Beaumont, California. It's placed on roughly 120 acres that allows us to work with children who are ages 9 to 14 who have been abused. So the type of children we have need a lot of care. Our kids have all been through some sort of traumatic experience and they've never treated their trauma. We have to try not to cry when we're there, when we hear these stories and, and try to change the subject and try to make it positive with the children because it does break your heart when you hear some of the things that they've been through. So at Child Help, we need to make sure that what's going on inside is taken care of by getting those therapies that they need. Oh, and I believe that the kids should be exposed to as much as possible so that they know where they're going to thrive. What are the donkey and the pony's name? Becky and um... We're a little different than traditional group homes in that we do offer all these extra services. We have art therapy, we have equine therapy. All of those things are important to the children. We have many, many programs for the children. So our additional therapies allow us to provide an avenue for kids to express themselves in more creative ways to express their feelings, the trauma that they've been through, and the abuse and neglect. Kids tend to do what was done to them for no fault of their own. They just think it's acceptable behavior. There's a girl here at the village now who was taken out of her family home because of the abuse there. She was placed with her siblings in foster care. But she got removed and brought to the village because she was sexually abusing her sister because that's what had happened to her. We know how to break the cycle of abuse. We know how to give children the coping mechanisms they need so that they don't become abusers. These are the things that we work on for them to know how important they are in this world. And without them, the world wouldn't be as grand, as beautiful. So what we do in changing the lives of these children is magnificent. I'm sitting in one of our group homes. And right now, it looks beautiful. It's gorgeous because wonderful volunteers have come through this house and they've turned it into a home. Our founder, Sarah and Yvonne, they cater to really making this um, like a home environment. Right in the middle of Hollywood, we call it the Hollywood House, and it's our foster and adoption program services. And what we do is we help anyone who wants to become a foster parent. We provide counseling for them. We help them deal with any kinds of crises that they may encounter because it's difficult. And if we're really lucky, sometimes we are able to help foster parents become forever families. Child Help Crisis Counselor, how can I help you? We have our hotline, 1-800-4-A-CHILD, where kids can call, text, or chat for help. So there's prevention there. We can stop it before it happens. Child Help's National Child Abuse Hotline serves every state in the country, plus Canada, and all the military bases overseas. But we take more phone calls here from the state of California than any other state in the country. And so one of the things we've done to respond to the need here in California is we've just opened a West Coast office for the hotline that's based at our Hollywood house. Our heart's in it. Um, we're here to work with children. Um, we're here to make the world a better place for the youth. We want to provide a safe environment. We want to be part of of that solution so those victims of child abuse know that they deserve better that they can have a bright future 
We have our Speak Up and Be Safe program, where with only two lessons a year in a classroom, children can learn how to protect their bodies, how to make that right phone call to the hotline. So one out of every five reports of child abuse comes from a teacher, and another one out of every five comes from a school security officer. So if we can teach those people in the schools what to do, we can save so many lives. It is our absolute duty to invest in the children of tomorrow. Every kid wants to have a normal childhood, but these kids weren't given that opportunity, and it will change them forever. So we try to give to make them whole again and give them that opportunity to blossom and bloom and become the beautiful person that God wants them to be. It's about fixing the damage in their hearts. And that's what we do here at Child Health. And every kid deserves to have that same experience that I had as a kid, that you had as a kid, that my kids get to experience. To grow up someplace where they're loved and felt worthy and feel like the sky's the limit. Every breath in us, we're going to work as hard as we can to keep these children safe. I'm Loretta Sterla. Happy holidays. I'm Sharon Sindel. Thank you for supporting our event. I'm Colleen Nur. Any amount that you can donate will help save a child. I'm Taylor Donahue. One dollar to a million dollars. Any amount can save a life. Hi, I'm Dasha Kaufman. Help us spread the message. And I'm Shirley Kaufman. Dial 1-800-FOR-A-CHILD. Hi, and I'm Pat Whiting from the Los Angeles chapter of Child Health. And you can join the Los Angeles chapter from anywhere in the world. I'm Marianne Lovelace. LA was the very first chapter of Child Health. Happy holidays! Happy holidays! Happy Hanukkah! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry to all, thank you for supporting our show. Spread the message, share the love, and save a life. Thank you. Very good. Yay. Don't give up hope. Think of the kids. It's over. I'd never. We're down by 50. 50. But we're only two minutes left. Huh? Oh, Norm. You're going down. Down. Oh, that does it. You, you're in. Finally. A case of abuse is reported every 10 seconds. While you were watching this video, three cases of abuse, including sexual and physical, were reported. Visit childhelp.org to learn more. And in the meantime, please send in whatever you can. Use your voice. Volunteer or foster a child. Donate monthly, become a child helper. Get involved, take action. Get in the game, fight abuse. Five children die every day. You got the love, love and hope can change the world. What's up guys? We just got challenged to, the, to do the Child Help We Care karaoke. I know the Sigma News are up to the test. So what do you guys think? I think half this chapter can't even sing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Luke doesn't even know what an F-sharp is. Yeah, I don't think we'll even be in the right tempo or even in the right key. Well, that's the whole point of a karaoke, guys. The bad singers have a lot of enthusiasm, may not be great, but the good singers help and carry them along. All right, guys, you know what? Let's just do this. I would love to start this off by challenging the great singer, Engelbert Humperdinck. And since we're counting on her to carry us in, in our song, my child help challenge is Delora Murano. So stay tuned to see that soon. Hi, I'm Taylor, and I've been a child help California volunteer since I was in high school. And this year, I created an event that raised over $5,000 for the Child Help COVID Relief Fund. Hi, I'm John, and this year, a group of us on the SOC team and other friends started a child help chapter at our high school in Maryland called Barons Give Back. This year, we raised money so that every kid at the Child Health Village could get their own Halloween costume. Now, it's time for Christmas, and this year we want to make sure that each child gets what they want on their list this year. 
Child Help is dedicated to raise funds year round to provide for children who are victims of neglect and abuse. Calls and texts to the Child Help Child Abuse Hotline continue to go up. That's why we need a bill to help fund the national hotline. Well, government help for these kids is stuck in Washington. It's up to students like us to keep working hard to raise money to help the kids in need. If Washington can't do it, we will. You can be any age and help fight against abuse. Up next, one of our youngest child help volunteers. Her mom is a popular TV anchor, and now she's making a name for herself through her own podcast. Welcome to my podcast. Today, I'm taking the child help challenge. I know this is a karaoke show, but I'm famous. It's singing the big joy song. It's so dreamy. <laughs> you already take the challenge. So now I have to challenge someone else. I'm well, for a It's the most wonderful time of the year. Let's do this. Happy holidays. I love you all so much. Okay, ready? It's the most wonderful time of the year. With With this jingle bellowing and and everyone telling you be a good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year it's the ha- happiest season of all with those holiday greetings and gay happy meetings when friends come to call it's the ha- happiest season of all there'll be parties for hosting marshmallows, for toasting and caroling out in the snow. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be much mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be parties for hosting, marshmallows for toasting, and caroling out in the snow. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories. Christmas is long, long ago. wonderful time of the year. There'll be much mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time. It's the most wonderful time. Oh, the most wonderful time of the year. holidays if you've enjoyed that piece of music and more please donate we cannot do this without you we need your help we have so many programs that are here set for the kids to thrive and succeed when you play your part by donating you help us a great deal whether ten dollars twenty dollars a hundred dollar bill twenty dollars can buy art supply twenty dollars can buy a mixer for the children to travel with and sing, microphones, batteries, cleaning the robes, $20 can go a long way. Help us spread the word. Help is here. 1-800-4-A-CHILD. Play with girls like you play with time. Build your hand until you have them all. Wait, Alexa. Pause, pause my Jen Lily playlist. Rebecca Cooper. <laughs> Hi. 
you really Hollywood star? How did you show up in my dream for We Care Karaoke? Well, I'm in the middle of nowhere, Canada, and I, I, I thought like I heard somebody singing my song, and so I had to pop in. And here you are, Rebecca Cooper. Well, you know how I used to always host the Child Hall Capital Karaoke in Washington, D.C., you know, when all the members of Congress and the media sang really badly? <laughs> Yeah, most of them were pretty awful. I don't know what was worse. He had to have been there. But honestly, Chris Matthews sang the War of 1812 song. We didn't even know there was a War of 1812 song. But then Senator Markey and his wife, Dr. Blumenthal, they sang We Got You, Babe, and they butchered it. And Congresswoman Mary Bono was in the audience heckling them. So <laughs> it, it was pretty awful, but it was for a good cause. And tonight, we are actually going to let lots of people sing off tempo and off key. But honestly, you know, nobody actually wants to hear more from Washington right now. So Cheryl Ladd, John Samos, and I are your real life angels this year. And I am here to grant you one child help challenge. Can I challenge you? Hmm. Sure, but I'm already here. You know, pick one more child help challenge. <laughs> okay. If I can have you, since Child Help LA Karaoke's theme is home for the holidays, even though you're not home, you're in Canada, but you'll be home eventually. And the theme is home for the holidays with Hollywood stars and everyday heroes. And since I've got a Hollywood star right here, I'm going to pick one of my everyday heroes. She is a mom from California. Her name is Sarah, and she is also a Child Help Los Angeles foster to adopt mom like you for the Hollywood house. Ooh, good choice. Wish granted. <laughs> Hollywood star Jen Lilly and Child Hub spokeswoman Rebecca Cooper. How did I end up here? Sarah, hi. You have been Child Help Challenge. Now you are in every woman's dream, a video with John Stamos and some real angels, including Cheryl Ladd and our own angel right here, Jen Lilly. You know, Sarah, you're such a great mom. And, you know, we all need parents to help protect children in need. I see you've got the, your little one. Hi. And so to take the Child Help Challenge, you know, all you have to do is sing along and to a karaoke song, and you're going to share it on social media with the hashtag Child Help Challenge, and then just spread the word to support the cause. Bobby Brooks grew up in foster care the performer surviving a childhood filled with trauma and neglect. He found solace in music, and when he became a professional singer, fans often commented on his resemblance to legendary Motown singer Jackie Wilson, famous for hits like Lonely Teardrops. It was after a chance encounter with the Four Tops and meeting Jackie's family that Bobby learned the truth. Jackie Wilson was, in fact, his biological father. Now his son shares his name and lends his own voice, helping child help and understanding the power of music. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. This is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and narrow pining till he appeared and the soul felt his worth. A thrill of the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn.
Christmas. Sarah, you are a foster to forever mom. How did you get to know that fostering was the right step for you? We couldn't have kids on our own and we wanted to have children in our lives and we could help many kids that need forever homes. So that's, that's the choice that we took. You know, Jen, I like to say that um, not only do you save a life, but you change lives when you're a foster parent and an adoption parent. Tell us about how this might have not just saved the lives of your children, but changed your own family's life. Maybe not everyone is called to be a foster parent, but everyone is called to do something. And there are so many ways that we can lend our skill set and lend our voice like, you know, we care karaoke um, to do wonderful things for children in need. And I mean, foster care has changed my entire perspective on life. It's helped me love the boy's birth mom. Um, I adopted two boys through foster care which is not the goal of foster care. The goal is to reunify these kids with their families, but it's so awesome um, when you can give them permanency and stability and you change, like you said, not only their lives, but their parents' lives and everyone that they've possibly touched. It's an incredible program. Sarah, Jen's right. You know, you always want a child to be reunified with their family, but at Child Help, we treat so many children who don't have a family to go back to. Tell us about how you were able to become a forever family. Um, in our five years of being a foster parent, we actually helped 15 children, um, and we were lucky enough, enough to adopt two. Well, Jen, one of the things you've always helped us do is spread the word about child help. And Hollywood House, many people don't even realize that it's right there in the heart of Los Angeles, available to anyone that wants to become a foster parent or get counseling on foster to adoption. So. How did you find out about it? You know, I started as a celebrity ambassador for Child Help, and I think that's how I found out about it. But the Hollywood House is incredible. They offer after school programs. Um, as a foster parent, they offer movie nights and, um, you know, Christmas parties and Halloween parties and holiday parties and and therapy and, and all these incredible programs. Um, that really do help you stay in the foster care game because as Sarah mentioned, uh, you know, foster care is a little crazy. It's, it's hard and unless you have a community and a support system, you're really not going to stay in it. There's a 50% burnout rate, but there's amazing organizations like Child Help and their Hollywood House that really help you have support, really wrap around not only uh, you as a foster parent, but also the children and their birth families. So it's an incredible program. I think everyone should check it out. Sarah and Jen, thank you both so much for taking the Child Help Challenge. You know, anyone can take the Child Help Challenge. It's just hashtag Child Help Challenge. They sing along to karaoke, share a video online about our event, or they can also help us by spreading the word about the hotline, about our website, or supporting the work we do by going to www.childhelp.org forward slash we care and make a donation. Thank you both so much for helping us out. You're welcome. And we love being a child help family. You know, and my song that I'm doing tonight just reminds me of the reason for the season. And, you know, Christmas is just a time where we can reflect on the perfect gift that God gave us and just being selfless. And this is a song that for me reminds me that every child is precious, that every child is a miracle and love changes everything. So I just encourage you as you're listening to think about um, just really open up your heart to the love of a child and, and consider giving back because Child Help is the most or amazing organization that I have ever, ever, ever been the privilege of, of, you know, being a celebrity ambassador for. Just $3 can help teach a child how to recognize and report abuse. A $10 donation will help us buy art supplies for art therapy for child abuse victims. $100 can help us feed the horses that provide the equine therapy for all these abused children. $500 could help us buy a computer for our schools. $1,000 could teach an entire elementary school how to identify and stop abuse. $5,000 can help us continue to find loving homes for children through our foster and adoption program. $1 million allows us to air public service messages across the nation. And help us spread the word that help us here. 1-800-4-A-CHILD! Please call 1-800-4-A-CHILD if you're in need of any assistance of any kind.
<laughs> just pick up the phone, text 1 800 4 child. Alright guys, just remember, it can save a life. Hi, I'm Loretta Sterla, a longtime child help volunteer and chair of We Care Karaoke. And I'm Judy Jensen, Director of Child Help's Western Region for Chapters, and I'm also a longtime child help supporter. The LA chapter was founded in 1964 and is the original volunteer fundraising engine. If you want to get involved, just go to childhelp.org and click on You Can Help. Hi, I'm Michelle Green Wilner, and I'm music director of the Los Angeles Jewish Community Children's Choir. And I became a child help volunteer virtually when they found me on my YouTube channel. We did this entire event on Zoom. Whether you use social media or stick to a phone, you can help us save lives by sharing this one simple hotline number, 1-800-FOR-A-CHILD. Choir directors know that it's been very hard this COVID holiday season. We haven't been able to get together in person to share music, but we can raise our voices for this wonderful cause for this good mitzvah. And so we wish you a happy Hanukkah and a very Merry Christmas from our house to yours. Five children die every day in this country from abuse. Few people realize just how widespread child abuse is in our country. Child Help knows how to break the cycle of abuse, and you can help by funding this important work. We are a Sigma fraternity at Arizona State University. We support Child Help. If you're having fun singing along to We Care Karaoke, show you care by sending a donation and spreading the word. Any amount you give can make a difference. Even $5 can help save a life. That's the cost of one coffee or sandwich. Donations are a really important way to help child help reach more children in need. There are lots of ways you can get involved with child help. You can start a school chapter anywhere in the country. My two grandmothers, Sarah and Yvonne, founded Child Help believing that every child deserves as much love and care as your own child. So they make Christmas a really big deal for all the children at Child Help. Christmas and birthdays are all special to Child Help because so many of these children never got a gift of their own or have painful memories of family holidays. Your $20 donation can help pay for the Christmas parties Child Help staff and volunteers host each year for victims of child abuse. $200 can help feed the children in their care. Meals are made special at every Child Help treatment program since many of these kids didn't always get enough to eat. 
One important way we can all help child help is simply to take the child help challenge. There are three ways to take the child help challenge. Raise your voice, spread the word, and support their work. You can sing out and support and share your karaoke video on social media with the hashtag child help challenge. You can help us spread the word that the child help national child abuse hotline is just a phone call or a text message away at 1-800-4-A-CHILD. Also spread the word that this entire show will be posted on Child Help's YouTube channel all of December and January. One of the biggest ways you can help this year is to donate. Simply go to www.childhelp.org forward slash we care. Hi, I'm Engelbert Humperdinck and I'm so honored to have been asked to say a few words and share some music. My, my music is my voice and it has helped me express something deep inside. A child can be silenced by abuse, they lose the song in their hearts. But Child Help works to make sure children find their voices. I support what Child Help does, and I hope you will too. So enjoy the song from my one of my Christmas albums, and let's reflect on what matters most, okay? <laughs> benefits of, of music in the sense that you can have children coming out to the village or to the chapel sad, depressed, and broken. But the moment they start singing, they blossom like, like flowers. Our children come from all different walks of life. They are so used to walking alone they're so used to talking, some of them alone, um, and now they get to be part of a network of kids. And when it comes to music, they're able to project their emotions, their energy, 
vocally using music and which means they're able to project and receive at the same time, receiving feedback and receiving the same energy from wherever they're projecting that music to. And it helps them shape who they are and it brings out who they really are inside. Thank you so much for joining us. And we also want to thank our wonderful sponsors. When Andrea and Don Freeze first started out, their shared commitment was really hard work, but also in the helping others. Don started out as a warehouse worker. He made $2.50 an hour, and now he owns the company. Don and Andrea have started the Family Foundation, and they have been able to help so many, many people globally. They have been our sponsors for many, many events, and we just can't thank them enough for how much they love the children in our care and sponsor so many of our events like tonight. We really do want to tell you how much we appreciate you, Andrea, Don, and DJ, and your entire foundation. And we also want to thank Loretta Sterla. Loretta Sterla has been a member of the LA chapter since we first began, and we're so proud of this event that she is chairman of. You know, we're so proud of our staff, and so proud of our volunteers. They work 24 seven. They've been working so hard since all of this virus has been going on. And we're so proud of each and every one of them. And I tell you, a big shout out should go to the Hibbets. Whatever you give, they're gonna challenge it and match it. Also, I want to give a very special shout out to Congress, the members, the special members of Congress who have really given of their time and talent to secure funds for these abused children. And now as we think of the children, we know that you will reach in your hearts and think about what you can give to help these precious children in our care. Have a blessed Christmas and a great holiday season. God, God bless, bless you. you.
O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bob tail rings, making spirits cry. What fun it is to laugh and sing, swinging song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Santa baby, slip a gift under the tree for me. Been an awful good girl, Santa baby, and donate to child help tonight. Santa baby, a gift and kind will do to its true. I'll wait up for you, dear Santa baby. Just donate to child help tonight. Think of all the fun I've missed. Think of all the fellas that I haven't kissed. Next year I will be oh so good if you include the kids on my Christmas list. Santa honey, I am sitting on the ledge for a pledge. Been an angel all year. Okay, not Cheryl Ladd, but you know, Santa baby, donate to child help tonight. Santa cutie, there's one little thing I really need the deed to your legacy dime santa cutie make dreams come true tonight santa baby fill my stockings with the duplex and checks to child help sign your ex on the line santa baby and hurry down the chimney tonight come and trim my christmas tree with auction items bought at Tiffany's. I really do believe in you. Let's see if you believe in me, Santa baby. Just forgot to mention one little thing, a ring. Okay, just donate by phone, Santa baby. Donate to child help tonight.